So recently, sexual assault and sexual assault allegations have been a big part of the news. Finally, it was always good to see an open airing of these sorts of claims, particularly when they are about very powerful men who have generally and historically been shielded from even discussion of these sorts of things, let alone accountability. And so we've done a lot of coverage about Tara Reid's allegations against Joe Biden recently. I noticed that in that we generally have made comments about the fact that Donald Trump, of course, also has faced many uh, accusations of sexual misconduct. And I've seen some people respond with that they're not very familiar with those. And generally, we don't go into depth. For one thing, I just assume that people know about these things. And for two, there are so many that it would take a lot of time. Um, and so I just want to briefly touch base with some of the allegations that have been made against him so that people understand the context um, when these sorts of things are sort of vaguely alluded to. So, Francesca, I'm going to just... I found some reporting recently. Business Insider did a pretty good um, roundup of all of this and a few yeah. other places as well. So I just want to briefly mention some of these so that these women's experiences aren't sort of taken out of the conversation. And we're also going to give the Trump campaign response to many of them. So just briefly, one of the oldest allegations was from uh, his ex-wife, Ivana Trump, who said that Trump attacked her after he underwent a painful scalp reduction procedure done by a doctor she had recommended, tearing her clothes and yanking out a chunk of her hair. Quote, then he jams his penis inside of her for the first time in more than 16 months, Ivana is terrified it is a violent assault. That is from the deposition written into a book in 1993. At the time, the author said, according to versions she repeats to some of her closest confidants, he raped me. Now, understand that since then, she has used different language, saying that she didn't mean literally raped her, that it was an emotional raping. Um, still, the response from Trump's lawyer, Michael Cohen, seems a little bit insensitive when he responded saying, you cannot rape your spouse. There's very clear case law. I'd respond differently, honestly, if I had been accused of that. I would not fall against, you know, case law protects me. Um, but that's one of the oldest. And that was actually, unlike many of these, that was someone he was actually involved with at the time. Right. Um, let's go to the second one. Let's see. This is an allegation made by Karen Johnson, who said she was a regular at Mar-a-Lago and said that Trump pulled her behind a tapestry and kissed and groped her without her consent during a New Year's Eve party there in the early 2000s. Johnson said Trump forcibly grabbed her genitals. Uh, let's see. We have a response as well. This is from Stephanie Grisham, who said that book is trash and those accusations from 20 years ago have been addressed many times. Um she still feels like it hasn't been properly addressed. To be fair, let's acknowledge that. That was Karen Johnson. Um, let's see. The next is from E. Jean Carroll. This is one of the more recent allegations. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a former L. Advice columnist who accused President Donald Trump of sexually assaulting her by pinning her against the wall and forcing his penis inside of her in a department store in a dressing room in the mid-1990s. The response from the White House was, this is a completely false and unrealistic story surfacing 25 years after allegedly taking place and was created simply to make the president look bad. So one of the ties that bind all of these stories together is that uh, the claim is generally this is just made up to hurt the president. Yeah, right. Or or sell books or whatever. I mean, and and what's very painful about a lot of the accusations also is that they are they're deflected by women, by women who work for Trump as yes. sort of these, um, you know, they're, they're surrogates and they're basically surrogates of patriarchy, I would say, um, to deny women their experiences and, and, and basically flat out accuse them of utilizing a false claim to, um, you know, to launch a career or to sell a book um, and yeah. just completely bad faith. The E. Jean Carroll um, accusation I, I found really haunting. Um, that's probably because she's just an incredible writer. And so her account was incredibly well remembered and described. Obviously, mm -hmm. you also many people don't forget when they are sexually assaulted. Um, but it was also really interesting because it was someone who she didn't hate before, like that she respected and she thought respected him her because she was an acclaimed writer, an accomplished writer. Um, and yet she was still raped by him in, I believe it was a Bergdorf Goodman yes. dressing room. And, and just how much that like, you know, I think took from her and as obviously being 
being not just assaulted, but disrespected in this like, well, okay, well, this is someone who he then, you know, he's talked about how he like would never, quote unquote, would never assault someone because they're not good looking enough Mm -hmm. or he didn't know them. This was someone who he absolutely knew. This was someone, you know, I don't know. I don't care about her looks or anything, but this was someone who he respected, you know, arguably, ostensibly. And I think the worst part about finally, just to say the E.G. and Carol account, is that she says that she's never been intimate or had sexual relationships with anyone since that rape. Jeez. And it's just like, no, girl. Like, oh, my gosh, I know she's my elder, but I'm like, I like I, that like terrifies me. That's awful. Imagining if your last sexual encounter was Donald Trump assaulting you. Yeah. And then being attacked nationally. And also, by the oh, way, then, she yeah. says that she has uh, a dress uh, with his semen on it. She wants him to do a DNA test to match. And they, of course, refuse to do it, even though it's totally made up. They could prove her wrong, honestly, by giving the DNA. They refuse to, of course. Um, so it doesn't matter what evidence there is. They're always just going to say it was made up. Um, okay, let me let me um, describe a few more of these. Um, there's an allegation from Jessica Drake. At an October 2016 press conference, adult film actress Jessica Drake accused Trump of grabbing and kissing her without permission. Uh, his response on the radio, this is from him, was, One said he grabbed me on the arm, and she's a porn star. You know, this one that came out recently? He grabbed me, and he grabbed me on the arm. Oh, I'm sure she's never been grabbed before. So if it's not clear, let me translate that for regular people. He's saying porn stars get grabbed and because of their work, the consensual sex work that they do, you can do whatever you want to them. They can't complain. It happens to them all the time. That was his defense against the claim of sexual assault was she's a porn star. What's she complaining about? Uh, let's see. The next is from uh, Karina Virginia, or sorry, Karen Virginia. There's a bit of a typo there. Karen Vir- uh, Virginia is a yoga instructor and life coach. Uh, when she was 27, she overheard Trump talking with a group of men about her legs, and that Trump then approached her, grabbed her arm, and touched her breast before asking, "Don't you know who I am?" A representative for Trump said, "Give me a break. Voters are tired of these circus-like antics and reject these fictional stories." Okay. Then we have, I mean, honestly, here's the thing. We're going to go through several more, but there's literally dozens. It's, Mm -hmm. they're just too many for us to actually go through. But Jessica Leeds, she's a former traveling salesperson, alleged that Mr. Trump grabbed her breasts and tried to put his hand up her skirt while on a first class flight in the 1980s. Miss Leeds was in her late 30s at the time. Um, Let's see, Jill Harth is a former business partner of Mr. Trump, said that Mr. Trump forcibly kissed her on the lips, groped her breasts and grabbed her genitals in what she described in 1997 as an attempted rape. That occurred in Mar-a-Lago in one of his children's bedrooms. And so, like, in a a stadium, surrounded by thousands of his fans, as you said, implied, I wouldn't have raped that person. They're not not good-looking enough. They wouldn't have been my first choice to sexually assault. He's saying, it would have been my first choice to assault non-consensually. And anyway, so look, I am hoping that... uh, I know that some of the right is seeing the current climate and the fact that some people who's caring about claims of sexual assault is apparently not as robust as it had been implied to be. They are declaring victory over Me Too. Me Too. There's an article in Daily Beast about that today, actually, that they believe, oh, um, because Joe Biden has been accused and because some people clearly aren't that bothered by it because it's Joe Biden, that that is, that is the straw that will break the camel's back, that the entire Me Too thing is going to go away because now everyone will be proven to have been a hypocrite. I hope that that's not the case for women's sake. And I will say, yeah. I am thankful of all of the people who are actually consistent and caring about all of these claims. Let's remember all of them. Yes. I mean, and I think that it's important as progressives and as Democrats um, to like actually take stock of the amount of uh, assaults and rape allegations that this current president has against them. I mean, this is the moment of hell that we're in where, yes, it does actually matter how many people have accused you of assault. Like that's like somehow we're talking about that. And as a woman, I mean, I thought Trump's campaign was absolutely done after there was videotape of him 
like admitting that he assaults women proudly, mm-hmm. right? Like I was like, oh, that's it. But then of course we see an entire political party throw an entire gender under the bus, right? That no, that absolutely doesn't matter. He's still going to be our our candidate. He is still going to be the front runner. Um, he's our nominee. He's our guy. So basically, women don't matter completely, yeah. and that's how it felt. And I don't. It's not. It honestly. We have to try and think of this not as a partisan thing. This is not Democrat, Republican. It's not left. It's not right. If we're going to look at sexual assault, we have to apply, you know, our principles and the law evenly. And if you're looking in a court of law and and I and this sounds so crass, but to be honest with you, Trump would get more years for the amount of rape and the amount of assault than, let's say, you know, a Joe Biden. Like and, and that's awful to say. But again, This is the realm of hell that I think women have always been asked to live within and also the realm of hell that we currently find ourselves. That being said, there has been, I do think there's been a marked difference in how Democrats have dealt with the Tara Reid story. And I've been really heartened to see that the last week, a lot of them have been speaking up. Uh, A lot of prominent leaders, media figures have been talking about it openly, Me Too movement leaders. And I think it, it, it does matter that Biden said, Women should be um, believed and listened to, but this didn't happen, right? He said he denied that it happened. But that is a marked difference than saying she's not good looking enough for me to rape. Once again, markers of hell, gradations yeah. of evil. Yeah, yeah, I do think that there has been a bit of a turn in the media coverage, which is good. Um, overall, though, like I, I just I try to imagine what if you were a woman right now who has been sexually assaulted and hasn't told anyone, like, watching the last couple of weeks, like, how little faith would you have that people would care? You'd, you'd have to wonder, well, what's the political affiliation of the person that sexually assaulted me? Is that going to be acceptable? Who is going to be attacking me based on what I say about this? It's just, right. it is a worst case scenario. As so many things are these days, I feel like we are in the worst case scenario. Yeah, women and once again are being used as pawns as they always have been and their their assault allegations are used for political fodder. Yeah. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.